Welcome everyone in this silhouette model in which we will be rotoscoping these two guys to bring them back to the plate. All right, so here is silhouette. We're going to create a new project. I'm going to name it M1, I'm sorry, M401. That is the name of this lesson. I'm going to write it down here. Create project. Nice. Next step is to import our footage. The thing is, we have to go back to Nuke again. Why? There are two reasons. The first reason is, actually, this is the normal plate and this is the understudy plate. We have to work in silhouette with the understudy plate because we've done the tracking on the understudy plate and we have to do the roto on the understudy plate. And we don't have any understudy plate written out. So we have to write it out. And the thing is, we're going to write exactly the same thing as that, but we're going to call it undistorted. So nothing very special to say about that. Just click render. And once you have it rendered, you have to go back to materials and go to footage and load the undistorted plate. Now we have to go to session, new session. I'm going to call it M401. Format, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. All right, and that is not fine. And I'm gonna explain you why. So the thing here is that we're working with the roto and we don't need to have something very heavy. We'd better work on something that is 8-bit, which is gonna be faster than the 16-bit. If we were to do some paint or morphing and stuff like that, we will be using 16 bits, but we don't need to use 16 bits right now. All right, so now we have that. The problem with silhouette is that when you import something, it's gonna be very blurry. Look at that, it's completely blurry. We have to go to the preferences and go to the viewer tab and zoom filter. We have to change it to nearest. Perfect. It gives us something that is way more close to the real plate. We can press play to put everything into cache. So now that our sequence is put into cache, it's going to never ever run again. So it's very useful. So now click here to create a roto. For instance, we're going to create a roto here. and another one here. I can go to this frame and if I want to move the whole roto, I can press T and Q to move it. I can also rotate it and put the ankle here. So I have to press W here and now I can easily rotate it. I can also skate it by pressing E. So now I want to go back to the edit mode, so I press R. And I want to add some more points, so I can press Ctrl, Alt, and click. I can also put a corner. To do so, I'm going to press Alt, click, and the dot, so it gives me a corner. If I don't like a key, for instance, I can go to the timeline that is on the lower part of the screen, and I can then delete the key. And if I want to make this roto invisible from this frame to this frame, I can go here and make it visible, put a key here to make it visible. And on the next frame, I can press this button again. So on this frame, the rotor is visible, but on the next frame, it is invisible. I can also go from frame to frame by pressing X to go to the next frames and press Z to go to the previous frame. I can also press Shift X to go to the next keyframe and Shift Z to go to the previous keyframe. It is very useful. I can also check the alpha. If you press A, it's going to give you the rotor and the alpha considered as blue. If you press A again, it's going to only give you the alpha on top of a black background. And if you press A again, it's going to give you the rotor back. So I never ever use that, <laughs> but I prefer to use Shift A. So Shift A gives you the alpha as blue. It is very useful. So right now I can clearly see if it's wrong or right. And for instance, if I'm taking too much background, Maybe I don't see it from here. Oh yeah, so the roto is good, but actually it's wrong because I'm taking too much of the background. To see it better, we can invert the alpha. So now I can clearly see there's something wrong. So you can play with that just to check your roto if it's right or wrong. Cool, so now I'm gonna talk about the tracking. So I'm gonna delete these curves. I'm gonna create here a shape and I'm gonna show you what we can do with the tracker. So I'm going to put that shape into this layer. I'm going to call it head. And I'm going to create a tracker. So the tracker here, th this is the tab. We can create a tracker here. 
we're going to take the ear like that you can track it frame by frame oh you can also track it through the sequence like that to check our tracking you have to select the tracker and the layer and you have to click on apply okay and then you have to only select the layer and press that button to stabilize so if you press play nice perfect so in the tracking tab you can also smooth your tracking so look at that it smooth the path but we don't want it to be smooth so we're going to let it as it is you can also before tracking you can blur let's preview it you can blur the plate you can sharpen it contrast it gamut the noise it but i almost never use it <laughs> you can also import trackers that is very useful you can import new trackers after effect trackers or shake trackers you can also export these trackers so if you are kind of happy of your trackers you can export them and import them into nuke cool so now that you know how to use silhouettes in the next clip we'll be rotoing these two guys and try to have a perfect rotor i see you in the next clip